Welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. And with me today, Dr. Eugene Seymour, the CEO of Nanovirusides, a biotech company doing some really interesting work here. So welcome. Thank and you. Uh, first, tell me about your company. We are in the business of making drugs that destroy viruses in and on the body. We already have 12 drugs in our pipeline. We're preclinical. We're preparing our first drug, which is a treatment for herpes of the eye, a very nasty disease, can cause blindness. And behind that, we have another 11 drugs, including drugs for HIV, rabies, dengue. Have you ever heard of dengue? I have. Do you know how many cases there are in the world? No. 400 million. Wow. Well, this is a mosquito-borne um, oh, yes. illness, right? So, oh, yes. Um, it's, it's mosquitoes, a nasty, yes. yeah, they're Those a problem. Those mosquitoes are everywhere. They're a problem, and yeah. Th with the change, whether you believe in climate change or not, the mosquitoes are moving up the southeast coast of the United States, bringing with them dengue, and soon Zika, and soon another nasty one, which is rolls off the tongue, it's called chikungunya. Chikungunya. It's Swahili for hunched over because you're in such pain huh. that you can't stand up straight. And that's another mosquito-borne illness? Oh yeah, okay. and it's endemic in the Caribbean. And, and the authorities in uh, the Caribbean countries, so as not to impact tourism, don't talk about it. Wow, interesting. Chikungunya, dengue, Zika. Okay. And Zika, you know, sort of came out of nowhere. Yes, it and did. I mean, it's really just the last six weeks, and it's well, spreading quickly. Yes. It's been around since 1947 when it was first discovered in the Zika forest. But it was thought to be brought to Brazil by people coming for the World Cup mm. or another athletic event. Interesting. Just wait till the Olympics. Yes. Okay, anyway, about us. We have years worth of capital. We have a fully functional, state-of-the-art biotech plant with a lot of PhDs. We have a number of drugs in the pipeline, and we're just moving forward as fast as we can to move these drugs one after the other into the regulatory system, the FDA, mm -hmm. the, the EMA in, in Europe. And we plan to bring a new drug into the regulatory system every six months. The, we have a platform technology. We can crank these drugs out every 60 days, mm -hmm. a new drug. Um, so if you said to me, I'm having a problem with Zika in my country, how long would it take you to make a drug? If I had the virus, it would take me, I don't actually even need the virus. To test it, we do. It would take about two months, 60 days, to create the drug. Then it would go into the testing cycle. It's a revolutionary new technology. Think of it, Jane, as penicillin for viruses. We destroy the virus. There are no other drugs that destroy the viruses. They keep it from going inside of cells. They keep it from exiting cells. But we destroy the viruses. And let, let me just explain one simple thing. As you know, a virus is just computer code. It's genetic code. It needs to enter a cell, hijack the cell, to create the ability for the cell to make copies of itself. Then it blows out of the cell, goes to the next cell. And you can make anywhere from a one to a million copies just from this genetic material entering the cell. What we do is some companies stop it from getting into the cell, some stop it from exiting the cell. We just destroy it in the circulation. Hmm. End of the game. Wow. So, yeah, and you have some partnerships with some universities. Yes. How, what are those like? Well, what are you doing with those? We have, like I say, we have the ability to test, but we don't have animal testing facilities. So okay. we have agreements with some commercial companies. We also have agreements with University of Wisconsin, University of Pittsburgh, Campbell Eye Center for our eye drug, mm -hmm. Baylor College of Medicine for our eye drug, and they will be doing the animal testing for us under contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. so let's go back to some of these viruses because it seems like over the past 10 to 15 years there has been um, there's been SARS, there's been bird flu, now Zika. Um, 
as a person who's an expert in this area, how do you, is this like a, is this a new thing? Why are we seeing so much more of this? First of all, let's talk about HIV. It's been around for a hundred years. Okay. It just slowly amplified itself based on, on things that happened, sociologic things, crowding, um, drug, intravenous drug use, okay. and so on. One of the reasons that we're seeing more viruses is that there's been progressive destruction of habitat. Mm -hmm. You destroy trees, let's say viruses live in bats, and the bats live in the trees, they have to move to another place in order to um, survive. Mm -hmm. And then they often go to urban areas. Um, Zika, been around for 60 years, but it's just sort of increased its presence and we are going to see, in fact, I was telling you, the president of Columbia said they were expecting 600,000 cases and 1,000 cases of this nasty neurologic problem, Guillain-Barre. I just read a report today that the governor of Puerto Rico said he anticipates 20% of the population to get Zika this summer. Wow, this 20% of Puerto 20%. Rico's population. Yeah. Are we doing enough for Zika? Are we taking it seriously enough? Well, a whole series of companies are working on vaccines. The president asked, has asked for a, Obama, President Obama, has asked for a $1.9 billion allocation from the Congress. Of course, that's like squeezing blood out of a turnip. Um, if he gets it, it's gonna be used for drugs, vaccines, mosquito control. Hmm. Mosquito control has basically uh, not done very well. Hmm. Um, there is a, a company in, in the UK that sterilizes mosquitoes, hoping that they mate with mm -hmm. the other mosquitoes and everybody dies. So far it hasn't worked that well. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen. This is a challenge. Yeah, well, it's There's a terrible a challenge. challenge. For people. So we have a drug for dengue that we've worked on with the University of California at Berkeley. Zika is in the same family as dengue, fever. dengue uh -huh. and dengue fever. I suspect that our dengue drug is gonna work against Zika. Now that just has to be proven. Okay, so it has to go through testing and yeah, what does it take? We have to go to? through the preclinical testing okay. if we elect to do it. Um, we're very busy doing our treatment for herpes of the eye, which is a blinding disease, nasty problem, 100,000 acute cases a year in the U.S., uh, requires surgery in a certain percentage of cases. And then we have our treatment for hospitalized patients with the flu behind it. So everybody's saying to me, are you going to work on Zika? Are you going to work on Zika? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to get distracted from the path, but if it's a big enough emergency, then we may be... Uh, compelled to do something. Well, you certainly have a lot of potential work. So tell me about, just finally, the company. The company. Uh, what are you working at for the next year, five okay. years? First of all, we trade on the New York Stock Exchange very actively. You have a market What's cap. the ticker? Oh, the ticker. Uh, N-N-V-C. Okay. Nancy, Nancy, Victor, Charlie. Mm -hmm. uh, about $150 million market cap. Mm -hmm. So we have cash for a number of years, so we're in very good shape there. Uh, we're proceeding with these various universities with our drug for herpes of the eye, and we've also done work with universities on our flu drug. Um, we like to get high-level collaborators because that sort of validates what we're doing. If we just did it ourselves and reported it, people would say, eh, but now the university... You mean like a major pharmaceutical company? or Not what? yet. We're, we're still preclinical. Once we go into humans, which will be next year okay. for the eye drug, uh, then I suspect that we'll have a, a partnership with a large pharma. Although, pharmas have been sniffing, so I don't, I don't know. It's, we're open to anything. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. We could talk for hours. This we could is talk for hours. really fascinating. Hopefully, you'll come back, Dr. Singh. I'll be pleased. Thank you, so, thank you so much in sharing the story of nanovirus sides. And thank you as well for joining us on Small Cap Nation. Mm -hmm.